Hey everybody, um, so we're playing uh, Rain and Hell, and we thought it would be fun to just do a video kind of explaining gameplay, like um, how to build out your list and a sample turn. Um, <clears throat> hey Steve, what is Rain and Hell? <laughs> well, I'm glad you asked. Uh, Rain and Hell is a skirmish game set in Hell. Hell is a real place, and... Uh, it uh, pits cabals of fanatical demons against each other who are battling for supremacy. What's a cabal, Steve? A cabal is a group of fanatical demons bent on uh, who are trying to bring their philosophy into reality. And uh, that's, that's one of the game mechanics is that um, they have their own sort of philosophies and how um, they... Uh, the philosophy is going to be sort of like a fighting style. Um, and it's going to give you like a, ar army wide abilities. Um, like, uh, let's see, we've got the, the, the Lords of Hell is going to be, is going to be one of the, um, the philosophies. Uh, their quote is, um, it's better to reign in hell. Well, Frankly, it's better than anything. Uh, and then that is going to give you um, your uh, your devout demons. You're always going to have your leader and then your devout. And those two units are free. Um, <clears throat> but the um, their beliefs are going to give you like uh, army wide army wide abilities, like um, the uh, the earthbound. Their quote, um, hell is over, we must get back to where the real souls are, go back to earth. Um, they're going to have a succubus as the devout demon, which is like the lieutenant. You have your leader and then your, you know, your lieutenant. And um, their uh, special army-wide ability is going to be that everybody in the whole army is going to have a plus one to their movement. How do you build a leader demon, Steve? So leader demons, um, glad you asked, that's a good question. Um, your leader is going to be uh, a specific type of demon. So um, when, you're, when you're choosing your leader, uh, you're, you're going to start with, you have a few choices. Um, <clears throat> so like here is a... Uh, uh, a warrior we have the um it, it's you know he's going to be better at fighting and then he's not going to have as much movement he's going to be tougher um uh, a schemer is going to have more movement a little bit li less life or, or really fast and um but they're also going to have their own special abilities like uh whenever the warrior makes a combat roll uh, an attack and you use d6s for attacks and defense um you can choose to make the value of any one of those dice a six so a, a critical success uh either in in attack or defense which comes up you know periodically and uh also um the uh the leaders are going to have their own special um essences the um <clears throat> The essences are, um, uh, they're, they're just like, um, kind of special abilities. Like, uh, for example, here's, here's one, uh, poison soul. Whenever your leader is making a defense roll, if they roll a natural six, a critical success on a defense, then they reflect some of the damage back on the attacker. And uh, also, um, every uh, every leader is going to have a relic. Um, so here's here's an example of a relic. Um, uh, the Soul Drinker. Whenever this demon makes a combat attack roll, each natural six uh, results in two damage instead of one. And and then if this demon's attack slays an enemy demon the leader heals one. 
And uh, also each um, uh, school is going to come with uh, the devout. Well, I mentioned that, but um, they're, they're different. Um, there are different, um, uh, you know, abilities like the, um, the Lords of Hell, uh, the devout leader, or sorry, the devout, um, lieutenant is, uh, the Lord of the Pit. And then the Lord of the Pit has flying, um, or the Earthbound has a succubus, which is, is also flying. But they have very, very different special abilities. Um, <clears throat> and let's see, what else? Any more questions, Matt? <laughs> uh, can you pick a devout that isn't in your philosophy? No. No, you're you're um, when you pick your philosophy, that's who you get. Your your that's what decides who your devout is um can you uh how do you pick um the other members of your cabal okay so um that's where we get into the uh soul essences so for a standard game the the um the number is uh 100 and um it's uh, or or a uh, campaign, um, so that's just going to give you like the points to buy what kind of demons that you're going to have in your cabal. Um, so if if you start out with a hundred points, though, for example, like a uh, a slaughter fiend is twenty one points, and then a method which is very low in point cost is sixteen points. So you can see that, you know, you build out a list very quickly with those 100 points. And um, the, uh, the game uses initiative dice. Um, so you're going to need RPG dice and you're, and you're going to need uh, D12s. So um, there... How many, how many initiative dice do you need, Steve? 10 max. But you need the... You, your... Um, you're going to have one initiative dice for every unit, including your leader. And um, a, uh, a 12 is a, a, a critical success, um, gives you the very first initiative. And that's something that we love about the game is we love the, um, the initiative dice, but combat is going to be, uh, combat and defense is going to be with D6s. And it's going to be, it's not like one of those games where um, you just roll and then you say, oh, you know, like I rolled, um, uh, a three, a two and a one. So those all miss, um, you're going to roll, uh, I, I roll my attack and then Matt will roll his, his, his defense. So it's more of like a, um, uh, like a, a boxing match, you know, then a, uh, just everything goes through or misses, all or nothing. Uh, hey, uh, everybody, uh, we're, Steve's gonna walk us through making his, uh, cabal. What do you want to start with first, Steve? Uh, let's go with our philosophy. Um, <clears throat> so, I think, I actually, I think I want to do... I think I've, I've picked out who I, what I want to do. Um, so I think I'm going to play my, my, um, my cabal is going to be the baby eaters. And, um, uh, for my philosophy, I'm going to pick, um, the demented. So I'm going to put that in here and I got these character sheets off of um, Snarling, ba Snarling Badger Studios website. So you've got all of your initiative dice up here and then you've got your soul dice right here. We'll get into that in a little bit. Do you need the sheet to play the game? You do not. This is a sheet that we've used for a previous game where I was, let's see, Lords of Hell and uh, 
Yeah, I've got my everything is here. <laughs> so I don't I don't need it, but this is nice. I like this. Um so my um my philosophy's special ability is um going to be um that uh when rolling initiative um I can choose to re-roll um, as many initiative dice as I want. So, so if I, if I roll all ones, I can reroll every single one of them. Can you do that no matter what? As long as my leader is alive. Okay. And, um, you know, we've got some souls in here. And let's how many see. souls are we starting with? 100. Okay. And um, let's see. I think that I'm going to I'm going to name my leader demon Balzazel. And um he is going to be a, uh, a <clears throat> he's going to be a zealot. So, um, because, what, what? What benefit does a zealot have? Um, a zealot is specific, is, is especially zealous. Um, <laughs> they, um, the zealot, like right here, you can see, I've got my uh, my zealot stats right here. Um, so they have their base stats. Um, they're going to have a movement of seven, which is better than average. They have a life of thirteen, which is normal, and a combat of six, which is normal as well. Um, they're, they're not specifically great for, um, kind of just average all around for their base stats, but their special ability is that whenever they make an attack roll, they increase that combat score by two. And then if they're fighting a leader demon, then the combat score goes up by three. So they're especially good in their attack. Um, so, yeah, let's see. What do you need to pick next? I need to pick his relic and his essence. So frenzy is a special ability. So plus two attack, plus three versus a leader. So let's see, if I go over here to the uh, leader essences. Um, I think, hmm. I think I'm gonna have to think. Hey Steve, what are we picking next? All right, so I picked my, uh, my essence, which is uh, poison soul, where a crit of a six reflects back to damage. So if I roll his uh, six combat for defense, if any of those come back a six, then it's two damage reflected back. And then um, for his uh, relic, I picked the Axe of Blood, which increases his combat um, by one on attacks, on all attack rolls. And um, his uh, philosophy bonus is that he gets to reroll all of his initiative dice once. And um, the uh, special ability, um, the leader's special ability <clears throat> is uh, that anytime um, if I roll a triple on defense, if I, you know, three ones or three fives, it's happened before, um, it, then that, that damage, the face value of that dice gets reflected back on the attacker on top of his poison soul. Okay, so next up, um, we have uh, our devout. 
And uh, for, for my school or my philosophy, the Demented, I get a, uh, a madness demon. And uh, the madness demon is not, not really, well, they're actually horrible at combat. Um, but that's their special ability is that um, they can, uh, once per round, they can make their combat score of three somebody else's combat score for the rest of the round. <laughs> so, um, but they have a movement of five inches and life 11 and combat three. And I think I will call my madness demon. Um, well, I'm gonna have to think about that. I need to think of something good. Hey everybody, as you can see, we have pre-set up a battle map to uh, explain how turns and rounds and combat work within Rain and Hell. But first, Steve is going to explain what we need in order to set up said battle map. Right, so um, in Rain of Hell, you typically play all of the scenarios call for a, uh, a rectangle board. Um, and a square is a rectangle. A rectangle is not a square. Um, <laughs> so we're we're playing uh, on uh, some stuff that I made, but what you're gonna need is um, you're gonna need a measuring tape. Uh, you're gonna need some minis, and then you're gonna need three to five pieces of terrain. And then we've got our dice box here to keep everything in camera as well. Does it matter what size or uh, shape or make the terrain is from? No, it does not. <laughs> does the size of the battle map uh, require a specific size? They recommend 22 by 30, right? Yeah, so kind of like your standard game mat size for a lot of games, um, skirmish games size. But, um, but, you know, for the scenarios, a lot of them do call for um, a rectangular, you know, kind of setup. But we're playing King of the Hill, so actually, like, a square is probably the best setup. Okay. Uh, what, uh, walk us through what our scenario is. Yeah, we're playing King of the Hill, and it basically, it's King of the Hill. And one of the cool things about Rain and Hell is that... Um, you can play with, with uh, two to four players. So we've got our deployment zones marked out here. Um, this is six inches, we measured in, um, and then these are also inch grids. Um, but, so Matt put some dice out so to show where his uh, deployment zone actually is, and then he's deployed, and then I've done the same thing on my side, and, um, <clears throat> We uh, we picked out our 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 um, cabals, and because we're doing a starter campaign uh, or like a, a a standard campaign, we used a hundred points, and then we picked all of our demons from all of our cabal from the uh, lesser demon list. But you're gonna see some of what they can do. We're gonna do one sample turn. How do we camera. how do we start our turn, Steve? We are going to roll initiative. So we have one d12 for each of our models, and then we're going to go ahead and roll. And uh, we've already decided that I'm player one because it's my house and my video camera. Um, so okay, so. I got a A12, um, and that I think is a six. Uh, I've got, basically this is, this is pretty good, but I'm gonna reroll a few of them, which is my leader's ability. Um, is that a six or is that a nine? Oh, that's a nine. Yeah, I'm keeping that one. Uh, so I'm gonna keep all of these, and I'm gonna reroll three dice. Oh, in the tray, in the tray. And this was an eight. So that's much better. I got another eight. 
and an 11, and a four. And now I'm gonna take my roll. I do not get re-rolls because I did not choose the same philosophy as Steve. Oh, I will re-roll that green because that is definitely cocked. Okay, it looks like I'm going to be going a lot later in my turns, but I have to live with it. So I've got two nines, oh, three nines, seven, six, four, and two. And uh, if we had both rolled 12s, then we would have rolled um, d6s to, to see who, who gets initiative first. And that's another unique thing about Ray and Hell is that if we had, if we both had- um, Go ahead, I'll get it. Three, I got it, I got it. Um, if we both had three 12s, then we could roll off for initiative three times. And I could get, you know, either one of us could possibly get initiative three times in a row. And then after that, it, it alternates back and forth. But I do have 112. So I'm going to go ahead and go first. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and activate one of my uh, methods. So my um, my method has the fly ability um, and they can fly nine inches. So they're sort of like fast attack kind of units. Uh, so one of them is going to get about right, whoops, about right here to be the first king uh, first on the hill, and then that, then I take away this 12 dice. And then we go down uh, in order. Uh, so the next initiative is an 11. So um, I think I'm gonna do, do the same thing with this one. And only units that can fly ignore terrain penalties and uh, can just fly over things like they're doing, they're fine. What would you normally have to do? Anytime that you go uh, straight up something like this, you're climbing and your movement is cut in half. But we're treating stairs as if they're normal movement. All right, and- So that's an 11. Do you, you have nines? Yes, I have three, nines. I have three nines. Okay, I have, I have a nine, but I okay. went, yeah, so. So okay. now we alternate back right. and forth. And, th and this is important because if we both have the same number in the initiative, but it's not 12s, the, uh, the person who went, who has not yet gone will activate. So because I have not gone, I will use my nine. I'm going to move up some of my slower dudes because, well, they're slower. And, and it's one of my nines. And now since I went last, even though we're tied, Steve will use his nine next. Yeah. And um, one another interesting mechanic, well, I guess we'll, we'll get to that. But um, So I'll show you an example of me trying to climb something. Unless it's smarter to go around the other way. Let's see, my leader has a movement of seven, so they can go is that is that quicker? It's quicker to run around. <laughs> Cause he can't even he can't even climb up to the side of this to get. So he's just gonna run. He's gonna go one, two, three, four. Get him right here. And then uh, one, two, three, get him right there. All right, and since he last went, I will use one of my nines and I will run another demon who is pretty slow. But there's no move moving. You can only move and, and or attack or use an ability on your turn. You have a set amount of movement. Yes. 
It does make it a little less complicated for people trying to get into a new skirmish game. It's also just a slugfest. No shooting, no magic. <laughs> Here we go. All right, and that is my Corp Flint Demon moved. All right, I have another nine. Oh, um, and some of you guys might recognize these models from uh, various other companies. Um, that is because you don't need to do any. Uh, you don't need to have any requirement. You can pick any model you like, any model you've wanted to paint for so long, and it's perfectly valid within this game. And these are the type of games that we're probably going to feature on the channel. <laughs> um, so I have one more nine. Um, I'm going to move... I'll just start waddling my Corpulent Demon up there. And I'm measuring base to base, so the front of his base up to the front of where he would move. Just get in the way of everybody up there. All right, my nine is the last, so I'm going to activate one of my spine demons and try to get a little closer. So the spine demons are a little faster than everything else uh, that I've run so far. So I'm going to basically run so that he can get to the edge of this building or the edge of the center. And then this is another mechanic. So you can't end your turn halfway up a wall. You have to start climbing and end your climb on top of something. So that's part of why we're running around trying to get up to the wall and get in position to run up and take the hill. And for example, if uh, here I'll take a model we're not playing with. If you can balance something on a surface, you can climb it. Yeah. But movement is halved moving up. Yes. And then these are two inches tall, so that's four inches of movement. Yes, so that so was my nine. What is your number I have next? an eight. All right, then go ahead. All right, I'm gonna run my spine demon over here. Um, Sagathar, he's going to go six inches up to here. And then that was... If anybody eight. starting this game uh, has a real... Um, trouble creating demon names just you know slam some nouns and verbs together i bet you'll come up with something fun <laughs> yeah. yeah you know that's um, what i've been doing um uh, what's your next number i mean oh you have several eights, I have eights. okay I so eights. this is another part of the mechanic which is if you have a lot of multiples and no there are not ties between you and the other players you just take all of your number so he'll use all of his eights up before i could use my seven yeah so I'm gonna run my um, my uh, slaughter fiend. Um, I'm gonna run him egg egg uh, egg mama. I'm gonna run him right up to here so that he can climb next turn. And that's that's oh I have one more eight. I have one more eight. Uh, and let's see. He's going to run six to right there. And then I have a four. All right, I have a seven. So I'm going to activate another one of my spine demons. And if, just so you know, guys, the reason we're putting our dice next to our models is because sometimes it can be hard to tell whose is whose depending on your game. So it makes it easy to know when you've activated something. So basically, I'm going to have my other spine demon join his friend right there at the base of that wall so that they can climb it next turn. And uh, then I have, have a six, so I will go next. I'm going to put this little boy who is a slaughter fiend. Uh... I think I'm going to try and have him run a rat. Nah, I'm going to have him go up to this wall too. Just because he can barely make it to that wall. And that is my six. Okay. 
And then uh, my last is a three. Oh, or, sorry, a four. Yeah, so, so you'll you'll yep. go since uh, I have not activated yet. So are you already yet? Uh, yeah. Let's see. Where, how far can he get? Five. I might as well. I'm just going to run him up to this wall as well. So he can get up there. It's a, it's a big uh, roadblock of, uh, of demons over here. All right, uh, that's it for me. All right, and now I'm going to activate uh, my devout uh, Fizz Legu, <laughs> who has a movement of five, so not a speedy boy. But he is literally just going to basically plop slightly behind these other guys about to start climbing these stairs. And then I have the last on my initiative, which is my leader. So I'm basically going to have him run up and try and support a few of these guys. Make sure they don't get any ideas about not climbing that wall. So he has a movement of six. He's going to move this way. Now... That is the end of our first turn. Um, if you would like to see the continuation of this battle, please subscribe and it will be posted later. <laughs>
during a charge, that, that gives him plus one dice. So he's, um, I'm rolling seven dice. Um, if you will wait a moment, um, I am going to activate something. Um, my special ability as uh, the philosophy I've taken, which is called the Judges, uh, is enforcing the rules. Once per round, when an enemy demon makes a combat attack against a judge demon, you may choose to enforce the rules. If you do so, the attacker may not benefit or activate any special abilities. Okay, so that takes out his special ability. His special ability is that he can re-roll three of his attack dice on the charge. So I only get to roll these once, but he would normally get to re-roll three of them. So seven dice. And then he's attacks, he's, he's combat seven? He's combat six at the moment, because he's right. not charging. So um, everything above a two hits. Oh wait, we should probably explain that. Um, yeah. The combat, how, how to determine your to hit score in combat is, if your combat ability is greater than the thing you're attacking, it's a two plus. If your combat score is equal to the uh, demon you're attacking, it is a three plus. If your combat score is less than the demon you're attacking, it is a four plus. So a one always misses, and then a five and a six always hit. But right now I'm looking for twos. So normally I would be able to reroll these two, but all the rest of them go through. So that's one, two, three, four, five. All right, and I have to roll what is called a combat defense roll, which is using my combat score. And every six I roll is a uh, missed wound. I saved two, so uh, whatever he rolled minus two is the damage I take. Yep, three. 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 So I have taken three. This will be on my spine demon named Thistle. So he has a he has a total of seven life. He has four life now. Okay. Um. So I'm going to. Um. I'm going to activate one of my methods. Um. So they both have nine inches of flight. Uh, and this one is going to go, well, it's five inches, um, but he's going to fly five inches to right there, and then he's going to use his special ability. Um, one, two, three, four, five. Uh, his special ability is that he can do a, well, this is another type of activation. Uh, what's that? What is it called? Uh, running skirmish. So he's used five inches of his movement. He can still use the rest of his movement. Um, so, but because the, his special ability is that when he uses this running attack, he um, gets an extra three inches of movement. So he's used five. He would normally have four more inches, but because he's doing a running skirmish, he gets uh, seven inches of movement total. So he's gonna do his attack on him. He's super weak. Um, let's see, combat three. So um, against his combat six. So I'm looking for fours and up. So one hit. And I will roll my combat defense. So nothing. Nothing goes through. Safety, no damage. All, All right. right. And then I'm going to move him. Oops. I'll go ahead and move him just a few more inches, like right to here. Back him off. And the then benefits of flying. That's one. That's one of my 11s, but I still have another one. Um, all right. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'll do the same thing with him. What is that? It's about six inches. Yeah. So six inches to here. Oops. Right there. And then his uh, three dice. 
on to your six. So again, hitting on fours. Uh, four hits. I'm oh, sorry, three hits. Three hits. And I say okay. none. All so he, he has one health left. So he went six inches, um, and then he still has six inches to move. So he's just going to back off. Back to here. And then that's another one of my 11s, so I'm on 7s. Alright, and I have an 8, so I will get to act. Um, this demon... Uh, he will have to take a half step to get around, but I need to get a little bit... I need to start pressuring. So, um, and this is your leader, right? Yep. So I'm Wait, going this to... One. This one. This yeah. one. So basically, I'm going to use one inch to get around the pillar. And then I have plenty of movement in order to get within a half inch of him. So um, I will be able to charge. And I will... Uh, so I have a combat of seven now. What is your combat skill for your leader? Um... Hang on, his, uh, it's six. Six, all right, so I'm hitting on a two plus and I will get to re-roll three of these. All right, I will re-roll that one miss. Okay, so meant to be. So I have six hits, which he will then roll against with his defense. Okay, so six defense. And every six he rolls is a damage back to him. Due to your uh, essence. <laughs> no, um... No sixes. No sixes and no triples. So that is six damage. And that okay. is the use of my eight. I have, I have a seven, but you also have a seven, so you can go yep. ahead and activate. All right, so um, I'm going to focus combat with him. This is another one of the uh, combat abilities that you can do. So um, he, uh, what it does is it, it bumps up his attack score and his defense. So instead of being, he's normally a combat six, but... Because of his his because he's a zealot and because of his focus combat, that's going to give him a lot more dice. So he's don't you also have the uh, relic? Yes. Yes. Yeah. So so I take the I have six base. I have plus one for my relic, and then I also have plus two attack because he's a zealot. So I get to roll. Uh, Nine dice. Okay, so one, two, three, do not go through. Does that not also trigger one of your abilities? Oh yeah, um, so triple ones, just triple ones, <laughs> um, give my, uh, my madness demon a what is that called again? Disorder? Um, It'll be under your devout, your devout's abilities. Yeah, disorder. Um, so every time that I, that, uh, um, any time during the game that any, anybody's role includes triple ones, my uh, madness demon gets a point of disorder. And what that does is um, it adds that plus one to their defense. Pretty valuable for a creature that does not have a high combat score. Yeah. All right, so that's one, two, three, four, five, six going through. All right, and I will be rolling six defense. All right, so I will save two of them. I did not roll any triples to activate his abilities. 
So uh, you rolled six, so I take four damage on this other spine demon. Mm -hmm. Need. 